Good evening and welcome to the Living Water live stream Bible study. My name is Bernardine Wormley Daniels, Soterios Ministries Incorporated, and it is a blessing to be able to join you for a study in the Word of God. We are picking up where we left off last week. So grab your notes and your Bible from last week and we will proceed from there. We're giving people a um, couple of minutes to come into the room. Praise God. When you come in, say hello in the comments. So I know that you're out there and what region you are joining me from. Oh, hey, Darren. <laughs> Darren up in the thumb. Praise God. Good evening, Kathy. Good evening to my cousin Mary and my Aunt Mary. Um, let my Aunt Mary know that I was at the hospital uh, a few days ago visiting Aunt Martha, and she is right up the hall from my cousin. Uh, my Aunt Mary's son. So I went to see him and sat there with him for a while and prayed for him. Um, praise God, continuing to lift him up. Um, good evening, Catherine. Good evening, Leanne. Hello, Inamu. Inamu I know I always, I know I butcher your name. I'm going to have to hear you say it. So I make sure that I say it exactly right. Good evening, uh, Minister Cannon. Praise God. Um, good evening, Michelle. Uh oh, what happened? What happened? Don't be messing up. All right, Pastor Jack is good. Okay, who's Pastor Jack? I'm not sure who Pastor Jack is. They must have a new pastor at the Yale UMC. All right, grab your Bible. We're going to pray. We're going to welcome the Holy Spirit. Of course, we're all recovering from the roller coaster ride we had with the lions on uh, Sunday, but it's all good. We had a great season. We are proud of them. We're proud of their coach, all the players. We support them 100%. And we will continue to support them next year. Praise God. So um, it's, a great, it's a great season in Detroit. And of course, Michigan beat everybody. <laughs> Praise God. We're excited about that. Go Blue. Good evening, Monica. All right. I don't think I have any other announcements for you. Nothing coming up that I could think of. We're starting a new month in a couple of days. January is gone. We're stepping over into um, February. So, Father, we thank you for um, your goodness, your mercy, your grace, for all that you are, for all that you do. Thank you for your steadfast love, for your persevering spirit, um, for the way that you loved us when we were yet in our sins. Thank you for the body and the blood of Jesus. Thank you for um, Holy Spirit, for the angel network that protects and guards and keeps us and ministers to our needs on behalf of the kingdom of God. Lord, we invite you by your spirit, Holy Spirit, brood over the top of us wherever we are seated and engaging in this study. We pray that you would breathe on us, restoring life, open our hearts to receive the implantation of the Word of God. There's nothing like the Word of God. And we pray that you would seal it in us, that it might take root in our lives and produce fruit that will bring glory and honor to your name. Think through my thoughts, Holy Spirit. Speak through my words, have your way 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Good evening, Corey. Praise God. Good evening, Shakaya. All right. Good evening, Minister Garth. Who else did I miss? Good evening, my good friend Mayu. Good evening, Donna. Uh, praise God. All right, guys. Grab your Bible. Listen, there is nothing like the Word of God. Okay? And we're talking tonight, we're continuing our study on activating, discerning, and releasing the voice of the Lord. And there's nothing like the word of God. This is the plumb line. This is how you know the bottom line, anyway, if what you are sensing or discerning is actually the spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit never contradicts the essence of this book, okay? So... You know, I'm all for, um, you know, listening to the Bible, audio Bibles. I do that. I am listening to the chronological reading of the Bible with um, Jackie Hill Perry. And um, I'm listening to the Bible with um, all that brother, James Earl Jones, reading the New Testament. But nothing compares to you getting your own Bible and sitting with the Holy Spirit, breaking open the cover and reading it for yourself, okay? The notes are on my Facebook page. Um, I've been passing out notes for decades, okay? And one of the reasons is, of course, so that you can follow along, so that you can try the Spirit and make sure that what you are receiving is of God. You can take the notes. You can look over them again. You can compare the things that I said, the things that are in the notes with the word of God. And if there's not corresponding alignment, then you need to throw it out. Okay? So I'm not afraid to have you examine it on that level. You know, I can learn. I'm, I'm always open to learning something new. Amen. Something that's rooted in truth. All right. So last week, um, let's see. Oh, good evening to, um, Pastor Heath, Brunetta Heath. Amen. Good evening to Apostle Gloria. Praise God. All right. So last week we, um, uh, started in, um, oh wait, let me go back. Okay, Holy Spirit spoke to my spirit and said, bless our pure in heart, they will see God. We talked about that that has to do with discerning, beholding, paying attention to. And we talked, I'm going to go real fast so we can get to where we, we left off. We talked about how hearing his voice is like growing in discernment and prophetic character. I'm telling you, it is critical in this day and age, depending on who you're listening to, that you are able to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you have to hang out with the Holy Spirit. You have to hang out in the word and with the word so that you get to know him. So the rhema, present speaking voice of God, has to do with spirit to spirit communication in the naos, the holy of holies within us, in like the, um, if you think of the tabernacle, outer court flesh, inner court, mind, or soul, holy of holies, the naos, that's where the Holy Spirit is echad, one with your spirit and their spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. So you have to learn how to enter into that sacred space, but that's got oil on it, um, within and commune with God right there, regardless of what is going on around you. Okay. Um, so we talked about how thoughts from our mind tend to be more analytical, logical, critical, cynical, questioning, 
Um, thoughts from our born again heart where the Holy Spirit resides tend to be more spontaneous. They arise from an internal process. They can be unplanned, unrestrained, unprompted. The Holy Spirit would just begin to speak. Okay. So we talked about that last week. We said that you have to settle the, the fact that everything that pops in your head is not necessarily originating with you. Okay. Because the spirit realm around you is real and the enemy does have a voice and those idols, which we'll get to in a minute, um, they have voices. Okay. And that stuff will speak to you. Those of you who are around my age, you know, or older, or maybe a few years younger, you guys remember, um, when Richard Pryor, the comedian and actor, um, went through everything that he went through years ago. You guys remember, I think he was freebasing or something. The explosion happened. He had all of this crazy stuff that happened with the addiction that he was fighting. And he had to go through a long uh, recovery process. And then he did a comedy um, show coming out of that. If you remember that, just put like a hands up or say, yeah, I remember that. And you guys will remember that a part of him um, dealing with that on the back end in his comedy show, he talked about how the drugs would talk to him and they would say, come on, Richard, come on, Richard, you know, you want to, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, we remember that. And so that these things have a voice, okay? And they will speak to you. So you have to, you have to, um, realize that everything that pops in your head do not be always coming from you. So that's why 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, this is all review, so I'm going fast. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 tells us to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God or the word of God, okay? And so um, you don't want um, evil thoughts, satanic thoughts to be able to get filed into your subconscious mind and begin to operate in your life. Okay. And so we went over all of that. We talked about how you're not alone on the inside. When you are in Christ, Holy Spirit lives in the naos. That's the Greek term for the temple that the scripture says, you are the temple of the Lord. When, 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 when you're born from above, your spirit becomes the naos, the holy of holies, and that's where that river of living water flows. That's where you have communion with him, okay? So then we went into um, a really incredible teaching from Mark Verkler, who I just love, his teaching on hearing the voice of God in the prophetic. His books and notes are excellent. Uh, maybe I'll do some of that at some point. I do have, I have to find his study materials. Um, but here's one of the key things that he said in it. And he talked about how you've heard the eyes of the window to the soul. And he says, you test flowing thoughts, that, that flow of thoughts, that conversation that's taking place in your soul. You test it by knowing where your eyes are fixed. Now, this was a critical point um, last week. And I even tied this into what I was talking about, walking in the spirit on Sunday um, during our evening uh, service, we, we, I used this as an example because it's critical for us to understand. And we talked about how the intuitive flow of thoughts within us comes out of the vision that you hold before your eyes. And that's right out of Ezekiel 14 verses one through six. It's a very interesting passage of scripture. And we looked at how, you know, the people of God came before, the elders came before the prophet Ezekiel and they wanted to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord was like, listen, you know, why should I let these people inquire of me? They have set up idols in their heart that they are focused on more so than me. That is in your Bible. And it talks about how the idols had become a stumbling block. And so he says, should I really let them inquire um, of me? And he says that when you do that, the Lord will speak to you. I will answer him 
um, but he will answer him according to the many idols. So he'll answer you and according to the idols that you have in your heart, his voice will be filtered through those idols. So it's a, it's a warning. And so we looked at that last week and you see the graphic there, the picture in your notes where you have the young man and he's got this huge idol, this huge issue that he is, he has been focused on more so than the Lord. And so that is impacting his vision. Uh, so people walk in faith. Yeah. Um, so his vision is being um, um, filtered through that idol. So when the Lord speaks, when his when when the young man's heart speaks to the Lord, it goes through the idol, and when the Lord speaks back, that idol is a stumbling block, and the word comes through the idol. And so that's why we told you that back in the day, and even today, when we get into a prophetic flow, we start recording it, because people will hear what you said through what they are beholding in front of their eyes. Whatever the idol is, that's what, how they are here or see. And so then we looked at that second picture, which is so excellent, um, where the guy has an issue, but he doesn't have, it's not, it hasn't become an idol. So he's able um, to see he's focused on Jesus. So when his heart speaks to Jesus, Jesus' heart speaks back to him regarding the issue and there's no barrier or hindrance. That's the place we want to prophesy from. That's the place we want to receive the prophetic from. So we, we told you to ask yourself, what, have, what has your heart been fixed on? What have you been focusing on? What have you been listening to? That's why some stuff we should just turn off. You know, when, it, when it's making a left turn and, and, and going down the crazy path, just turn it off. Don't, don't let it get, get deep, deep down within you. And so um, we talked about what has your heart? Have you been fixed on Jesus or all the crazy madness that goes on in your head? Because the intuitive flow of thoughts will be that internal dialogue. I could say you could write that in your notes. The internal dialogue that is playing all the time in most people's heads will be heard through the voice of what you have been focusing on and it'll be filtered through those issues that prevail in our soul so we said that's why the soul is the battleground and it has to be purified the soul is the seat of your mind your will your intellect and your emotions and it must be purified you have to change the filter Okay, just like you have to change the filter in your furnace, change the air fil filter in your car, change all you coffee drinkers. When you have those coffee pots, you have to change the filter that the coffee flows through. And when you will know when you need to change it because the coffee will be bad. It'll have all kind of grains and stuff in it. And so come on, that that's what happens in our soul. Some, you have to change the filter, clean it out, word in, word out. And the pressures of life will help you to see what you've been focusing on. Because when life presses you or squeezes you, what is in you is what comes out. Hallelujah. Okay. So um, I told you about the Lord telling me to wallpaper the walls of my heart with his word. I've mentioned that several times. And we went on. We talked about how changing the filter um, so that... Um, um, you receive his voice and not the voice of, you know, whatever the idol is in your heart. And listen, in the body of Christ, we can make religious leaders and um, muse, um, worship people like famous worship. We can make them idols. And, and, and some of them today are saying some crazy stuff. So you cannot let their voice be the filter through which you hear things, okay? You have to, um, yeah, he's going to be moved out. Okay, great. He's going, he's, okay, that's my cousin. They're moving him out of um, ICU. That's awesome. Praise God. I have to go back and um, see him. But you want to change the filter so that it receives his voice without all the stuff, okay, without all the crud, 
<laughs> without all of the static on the line, okay? <clears throat> and those of you who, um, you know, minister prophetically and that type, you, that's why we have to stay before the Lord. You have to make sure that your heart is pure um, because you don't want what you're releasing to come through the idols and the biases and the hurt and the pain that's in your soul. Because you could, in the Holy of Holies, you could, um, you could um, get a pure right now word from the Lord. But that word has to travel from the Holy of Holies within you where the word was pure through the, that, the, 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 um, the holy place, that, that middle area in the tabernacle. And depending on what you've been feeding on in there, um, it will pick up debris along the way. Then by the time it gets to the outer court, passes through the uncrucified flesh, it picks up other stuff. And people will prophesy stuff that is not what the Holy Spirit originally said. And the pride gets all mixed in. That's how we got into the prophetic mess that we got into during the last presidential election season where you had prophets who were really hearing from the Lord, but they let the desires of particularly um, the real political Christian um, a part of the body of Christ influence um, and their own desires influence the transmission of that word and it came out wrong, okay? So we don't want to do that. So we talked about how do we know the difference between the stuff that's in your soul and your spirit, okay? How do you know the difference when it's your flesh or if it's your unsanctified soul um, um, or your spirit? And so this is where we left off. We said that God's thoughts will be expressed through our personalities and style of speech. So God will, um, he doesn't eradicate your personality or your style of speech. God will speak to you in a way that you can understand and the way that your personality will hear him. And that's a, that's a real part of learning to hear the voice of the Lord that you have to practice because we each hear differently. Okay. Some of, some people, um, some people, um, uh, he, some people feel, some people sense, some people hear, some people see, and, so, and some people get a combination. So you have to learn by spending time with the Lord how he speaks to you, but it's always through your personality. And so that's why, you know, oftentimes the Lord will speak to me and he'll give me words like in the Hebrew or in the Greek, because I've spent a long time studying the original language when I was in seminary. I had a year of Hebrew, a year of Greek, and then you all know recently, like in the last year, I joined the um, Biblical Mastery Academy and I took another intensive year of um, the, the Biblical Greek with an emphasis on actually reading the scriptures in the Greek without the English. And so oftentimes when the Lord has given me a word, he'll give it to me in the Greek or the Hebrew because he knows that I, it fits my personality and that I'll go and dig into that and see, now what is it that he is saying to me, okay? So the divine flow, of, and you know, sometimes when I, I, I can get a word for somebody and like the music that I hear might be um, some old secular song that actually has lyrics that are very um, prophetic. And I, 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 was, I will never forget, I was in Canada, in St. Thomas. I was ministering to this woman. I was tired. I had been teaching or preaching, and then I had prayed for all these people that Jacintha had asked me to pray for. And then she brought this one last, can you, just one of, can you please just pray with this, this lady? So I started praying for her. And every time I took her by the hands, I kept hearing um, uh, that song that said, um, tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. You guys remember that? It's been something like 10 long years. Do you still want me? If I don't see a ribbon um, round the old oak tree, I'll stay on the bus. Forget about us. Put the blame on me. 
And so that tie a yellow ribbon and it was resounding in my head. And I was like, Bernie, you are tripping. Shake it off, go deeper, get a word for the Lord. And that song kept looping. It was looping when well, the Lord used that because it's in there. The Holy Spirit pulls what's in your files. And sometimes he'll download stuff that you didn't know, but sometimes he'll use what's in you. Okay, so I'm trying to help you to learn how he's, Tony Orlando, and was that by Tony Orlando and Don? Tie a yellow ribbon round your old tree. Now see, Minister Cannon went way back in her head somewhere. <laughs> that probably was. We get no, we're getting more mature. Let's put it like that. So listen, finally I said, ma'am, this might seem strange, but I hear the Lord, I hear this song and I started singing it to her. And um, then I started to prophesy out of it. Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. It's been ten long years, do you still want me? If I don't see a ribbon round that old oak tree, I'll stay on the bus, forget about us. I said, the Lord is saying there's, there's a, a, a relationship that has been estranged, someone you've been estranged from, and they're wondering if it's okay for them to come back home or reconnect with you. And I just begin to prophesy to her out of that. And the lady starts to weep and I'm like, okay. And she tells me it was dead on, spot on. It was a word from the Lord. So he will speak to you through your personality and style of speech. I was ministering to another man years ago. Every time I touched him, I heard this old back in the Motown era song, and it was that song, Break Up to Make Up. That's all we do. First you love me, then you hate me. It's a game for fools. I was like, okay, Bernie. So I just, I, you know, when it's repeating, I know it's the Holy Spirit. So I begin to prophesy out of him, I said, out of that song. And I said, I hear these lyrics. And I told him, I said, the, the man gets all embarrassed. You know, you could see, I, that's how you know you hit a vein. You know, sometimes people just have a stone face. They, they're in shock and they won't respond at all. So you really have to just kind of flow based on how you know Holy Spirit speaks to you. And I begin to share with him. I hear the Lord saying, you're here and then you're there. You're in this relationship, then you're in that relationship. And the Lord is calling you to a new level of sanctification. I just begin to prophesy to him. When I got done, the man started confessing. Turned out he was a... <laughs> Minister Cannon says, that's the stylistics. Come on now, see? <laughs> we have the same prophetic flow going on right about now. Oh, Lord, the stylistics break up to make up. So anyway, the man was a bigamist. He had a wife in one city and a wife in the, and the Lord just read his mail in a very, very... Um, uh, godly way that was, you know, loving way that was trying to draw him. <laughs> she says she's flowing. Um, so pay attention to how Holy Spirit speaks through you. Okay. And I could give you example after example, after example, but those are just a few. Uh, also, um, the Holy Spirit's voice is usually light and very gentle and is easily cut off by any exertion of your flesh or your own will or thoughts. Very light and gentle. And of course, we remember that the prophet Elijah, when he was running from um, Jezebel after that conflict with the uh, prophets of Baal, and um, he, he ran and up and met the Lord on the mountain. There was the wind, the fire, the, you know, the earthquake. God wasn't in any of that. And in the Hebrew, it talks about how Elijah, then there was stillness and the sound of silence. And that's where Elijah heard the voice of the, of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit's voice is very light and gentle. And um, here, God's thoughts will have an unusual content to them, okay? Um, in that God's thoughts will often carry greater wisdom than you possess regarding a situation. Um, his words have more healing 
um, involved in. Even if it's a corrective word, it'll be a word of healing. Um, his words are more loving and they're, the motive behind how he speaks is more pure, um, um, pure motive oriented than our thoughts, okay? Um, unusual content, it carries greater wisdom, more, there's healing in it, it's more loving. Um, people can get delivered and healed and set free by a word that you speak out of your mouth that comes out of the Holy of Holies directly from God, directly from the Holy Spirit. So it's critical for us to learn how to activate and know his voice in, in this season, because not only do other people need a word from the Lord, but we need a word from the, oh, and let me tell you guys this. Really, I, I said this on Sunday, but if you weren't watching the stream, I had a dream uh, Saturday morning. And um, actually, I wasn't dreaming. I was waking up. And in that level of consciousness between fully awake and, and not sleep, you, you know, you can just hear good. There's not a lot of static yet in your soul. And so I heard the Lord call my name and he called me a name that he has for me that he gave me when I was pastoring um, at Henderson that's connected to the prophetic uh, gifting uh, on my life. And so he used to, when he when I would hear him call me years ago, I, that's the name I would hear him say. And I haven't heard him say that in a while, but I heard him speak it over my life on um, Saturday. And um, so I, I began to listen and I heard him say, come up like into the spirit. He said, walk in the spirit. And he said to me, and this is an example of like knowing the difference, like between soul and spirit, when you think you're hearing from the Lord. And he said, walk in the spirit, walk with me in the spirit so that you can overcome the angst that is coming upon this nation. Okay. And so angst he said, you, you, you're going to have to walk in the spirit so you'll walk above the angst. The angst won't pull you down because you'll be walking in a realm above it, okay? That's a word for the church. So on Sundays, I started speaking about walking in the spirit. I'm teaching on walking in the spirit, okay? So I, angst is a word that I know, but it's not one of my day-to-day -day vocabulary words. It's not one that I use normally in conversation, so I had to look it up. And the word angst has to do with anxiety and fear, a sense of dread. So I don't know what it is or when it is. I'll have to get before the Lord and keep listening. But something is coming to this nation that is going to cause anxiety and fear and a sense of dread. It's probably going to drive people into the church or into home fellowships, that type of thing. So we need to be ready. But the Lord said, in order for us to make it through that season, we must come above it by walking in the spirit. And so what we're talking about right now is connected to that. You have to know the voice of the Lord. So now waking up that early in the morning, I now here, here's a clue. The, the, the thought had unusual content to it. It was very light and gentle. I was just walk, waking up and it was expressed through my personality and pulled one of those words out of my vocabulary from way back. And so um, it causes, number six, it causes a special reaction. And so it caused a reaction. I was like, okay, I need to get up, number one, write that down in my journal, and I need to press into that. I need to look up that word because that's not one I use every day. It's one I know, but I, but I don't use it every day. And so um, that was another clue that it was the Holy Spirit. And the enemy of my soul is not going to warn me to not be anxious or fearful or have dread when I see what begins to happen in this nation or what is coming upon this nation because of it turning its back on the Lord from the top down, from the church to the club, you know. So there is something coming, I'm just telling you, okay? So you need to begin to learn how to walk 
in the spirit so that when the world, this nation starts losing its mind, you don't lose yours. Okay. So his thoughts have unusual content. They carry greater wisdom. They're light and gentle, expressed through our personalities. They cause a special reaction, a sense of excitement or a sense of conviction. Um, it'll, his, his voice will, his thoughts in us will instigate, instigate or provoke, um, faith, life, all. And or or peace or calm, okay. Um, so a special reaction uh, when his um, voice, his words, his thought is embraced. They carry with them a fullness of strength to perform perform them as well as a joy in doing so. So hearing him Saturday morning changed my whole. Um, sermon focus i was going to pre preach and i had told enamoye to to the songs we were doing was focused on worship i was like i'm gonna preach about worship and the lord just kind of sent me in a different direction of course we'll, we'll get to this in that i know that you have to we ascend in worship so one of the ways that you you get above the angst is by worshiping him and you lock in, get back in your seat and you'll begin to walk in the spirit. Okay, but that's another message. So there's a special reaction. And when we embrace it, they give us the fullness of strength to perform it. And so that word on Saturday just kind of stirred some stuff in me and began to push me back into a, a, a sacred rhythm that I had kind of been neglecting, you know, but getting back to my, um, I like practicing fixed hour prayer. So three, three movements a day, morning, midday, and evening. That's just, I just, I thrive better when I'm doing that, when I break up my day with pauses to just reflect on him and see where he is. That feeds my soul, okay? And so that was my reaction coming out of it. And then I said, oh, I need to, in order to give me the strength to perform it, I need to change what I was going to preach, and I need to do this. Even if we think we've heard it before or that we know it, no, let's go back and look at this again because the Lord is saying something is coming and I'm telling you the effect that it's going to have on the nation and I need the church to be ready to be walking in another level above all that so that we can pull people out of the darkness into the light. Amen. And so uh, another way we know the difference between our soul and our spirit is um, your spiritual senses are trained as time goes on. You know, so the gifts get stronger by reason of use. Just like uh, if I don't go to the gym and work out, then I cannot do the stuff that I was doing when I was doing CrossFit literally five or six days a week. Those games are gone because I haven't been training like that, okay? And so if we don't, and oh, listen, that's why the word that I heard that morning, the name that he called me was provoking that gifting in me because the last, oh, 11 years of my life was a season where that gift was squashed or turned down or not affirmed or not even recognized. You know, it's a part of my personality that I don't even think um, that that's that in that season of my life that people within that camp, I had to go out of the state or somewhere and then people would receive me in a certain way. But when you're in your home place, sometimes Jesus said that a, a prophet is, not, is like usually without welcome in their own home. And so um, your spiritual senses are trained as time goes on. So we have to exercise our spiritual senses. You have to spend time in the word and with the word, and you'll more easily and frequently experience God speaking in this way. So don't quit listening. God is speaking to you all the time. And so what did the, the, um, the word of God, um, what do I have to give away? Let's see. Oh, I can't find anything fast enough. Um, it's the passage that says, his thoughts towards us are more numerous than the grains of sand. His thoughts towards us are more 
numerous. Psalm 139. Did anybody find it before I did? No, you guys didn't. Psalm 139. Let's look at it. This is a key passage that we use to teach people, to activate people in hearing the voice of the Lord. Look at this. Psalm 139. Go down to verses 17 and 18. God, how precious are your thoughts to me. How vast their sum is. If I counted them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I wake up, I'm still with you. And um, I was listening to, I want to say it was um, John Bevere earlier today. He was teaching on something and I had him on in the, in the background. And he was talking about how, oh, he was talking about his love for his wife and his, his thoughts about her. But he said, if you get a box, like a shoe box, and fill it with sand, that in that one shoe box, there's literally, if you could number them, over a billion, <coughs> over a billion grains of sand, like in a sh shoe box. So he said, I love my wife. She's my best friend. She's my heart. He says, but I could not fill a shoebox of thoughts like with that. I, it's, it's just not possible for me to do that. And yet the word says, look at this, that God's thoughts, that his word, that the conversation, the, the word that he's trying, because listen, he is the word. Okay. In the beginning was the word logos and the word was with God logos and the word was God or is God. Okay. So he is the word. Um, and so his expression, what he wants to communicate to us, the conversations that he wants to have with us, are more numerous than the grain, like a, a one shoebox over a billion grains of sand. So there, it is not possible to number all the grains of sand that are on the planet Earth. So that means that God's desire, boy, I felt this has got this has got grease on it right here. God's desire to talk to you and with you. Say, that's prayer. God's desire to engage you in conversation because God, the word scripture says, God is love. That's in John's epistles, 1 John. God is love and love wants to communicate. Okay, that might be in your notes. I might be getting ahead of myself. But so I want you to crucify the part of your brain that is telling you that you cannot hear the voice of God, or that God doesn't have anything to say to you is just not true. So highlight, where's my highlighter? Highlight these verses in your Bible, in your Bible, Psalm 139 and verses 17 and 18. Okay, I'm going to highlight it in mine. So I could find it faster when I want it. This is one of our key verses that we use in training prophetic teams and letting people know, yes, you can hear God. You just got to get on the right frequency. Okay. So God is speaking to you all the time. So next to number nine. Okay. Let me put it in my notes. Let me put uh, Psalm 139 verses 17. And 18. That's just one example. Okay. So, okay. So you, you're hearing something, you, you're hearing something. Um, and if you're not, if you, if you got blocks, man, we can activate, I can teach you, you know, how to, how to hear. Maybe we'll do some activations when we get to the end of this. Um, you have to change the filter. Okay. Usually when we're having a hard time hearing, it's because of the voices of the idols and all the other debris that's in our soul is louder 
than our focus on the Lord. Okay? Did you get that? Because he's always speaking. So you have to reduce the volume of the enemy and the distraction and the debris and the stuff. And you, you have to, well, how do I do that? I'm so glad that you asked. How do you do that? You bring it to the Lord and give it to him. What does scripture say? Cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. Let him do the caring about that for you. So you pause and you surrender. Jesus, I give everything and everyone to you. Every time that distraction comes up, just pause. You could be in the middle of a conversation and say, excuse me, Jesus, I give everything. Listen, we're talking about your sanity and your spiritual health right now, okay? Not what your neighbor thinks. So you test what you're receiving and sensing and feeling and hearing and dreaming. You test it against the word of God. Does it line up with the precepts of this book, okay? Your flesh wants to do this. Your flesh desires this. Well, does what your flesh want line up with against the word of God? If the word of God says, don't do that, then you tell your flesh, no. Okay, that's not hard. So here's how we discern <laughs> the truth from the false. I love the word of God. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14, let's flip over there because we were in the Old Testament. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, um, on the other hand, the person who prophesies, in other words, let's not, don't make it so, let's not make it so spooky spiritual, essentially, the person who senses, feels, hears, sees what Holy Spirit is saying or doing in a moment and endeavors to communicate that to someone else. That person, who we call that prophesying, that person should, uh, who the person who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, for their encouragement, and for their consolation. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Um, another translation says, translation says edification, exhorta, edif edification, meaning it should build them up. Okay. That's that oikodomeo word. It should, it should build up their house. All right. It should strengthen them. Okay. Mine has a little note. What does my note say? Yeah. Building up, literally building up. So, um, strengthening or building them up. In other words, if you're prophesying or you're claiming that you're speaking a word from the Lord and it is ripping a person up one side and down the other, they feel like they've been slimed, like they should crawl in a hole and pull the hole in behind them. That's not the spirit of Christ. Exhortation. It should encourage them. You can do it. I was um talking with a, a friend of mine who's very apostolic and prophetic and just a real strong leader in the body of Christ, you know, apostle slash prophet gifting, you know. And um, she was just speaking some words of encouragement and edification, you know, to my, to my spirit earlier today. That was, it was edifying, it was exhorting, and it was also comforting, you know. And so that's what the voice of the Lord should do. Our words, when we say they're coming from Jesus, should encourage those you minister to and that you're called to bless and to be a blessing. Now, let's, let's put a disclaimer right there. If you are in a position of leadership and you are unrepentant and God has been speaking to you and speaking to you and speaking to you, then the word that comes might be a little heavier and a lot more corrective. But on the day-to-day -day norm, it should fit into 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3. But God will speak a strong corrective word to us, okay? Um, just like any other parent, okay? So also, how do you discern the true from the false? If I believe that I got a word from the Lord, like let's say the word, um, 
that I got on Saturday about walking in the spirit. Well, walking in the spirit is in the word of God, okay? The devil is not going to tell me to walk in the spirit. Okay, he don't want me walking above the foolishness that he's doing and not being phased by it because I'm seated. I stay in my seat with the Lord in heavenly places. So it should not contradict the word of God. So if you're, for instance, if you're married and you see this other person that you really like or, ooh, they so handsome or, ooh, she, she's so fine or whatever, I believe the Lord is telling me that I married the wrong person and that I need to let them go and get with them. That do not be the spirit of the Lord. That would be the huge fornicating idol that's in your flesh. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, John 17 and verse 17 says, sanctify them by truth. Your word is truth. So the word of God is truth. It should not conflict with the word of God. We tell ourselves some really stupid things in the name of the Lord. And the church is notorious for doing this, particularly, okay, come back. We'll come back, Bernie. <laughs> I went somewhere in my head. Some churches are very good at putting the name of the Lord on stuff that came from the huge idols that are speaking to them in their soul. And they will release it over the body and blame it on Jesus. <laughs> and so we should be able to discern, is that true or false by these things? Is it, does it edify, exhort, comfort? Does it conflict with the scriptures? Does it represent God's nature? Does it represent God's nature? God is love. Okay, well, I don't know what God's nature is like. Okay, well, here, let me help you. Go to 1 Corinthians 13. Now, this is one of those passages that we usually read this passage at weddings and, you know, that type of thing. People are not usually listening, but they should because this represents God's nature. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. You know what? Let's uh, just because I, my mind wants to know before I say it out loud, I want to make sure I'm right. I don't want to lead you astray, uh, but have not love. Okay. Yes, I got that. If I have prophetic powers, all faith, but have not love, is that still a God thing? Okay. If I give away, okay, but I have not love, okay, it's a God thing. Okay. okay, yeah. The word there that's translated as love is the word agape. It's pretty consistent throughout the text. And agape is not eros, that ooh, baby, ooh, baby, gotta have you, the eros. No, it's not that. It's not phylos, which is brotherly love, like you, my, you know, you, you the man, you know, we, we friends, you know. No, agape is covenant love. It's the God kind of love. It's the love that is God, okay? And so this says, if I speak human or angelic tongues, but have not love, in other words, if I can robaba, she can so a lot of people can pray in other tongues, but it says, if, but if I don't have love, I'm just making noise. Okay, I'm so glad I didn't write it. You can't get mad at me. I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, line up a thousand people, bam, 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 bam. I can prophesy details, accuracy. Okay, if I can do that and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but I don't do it from a posture of love, the scripture says I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions so that I come across super speed reach out. And if I have, I give over my body in order to boast, but I don't have love as my primary, the agape love of God as my primary motivation, I gain nothing. So now here, this is what love looks like. So um, does it represent God's nature? If you get a word and it doesn't fit in this 
per, these parameters, then you might need to um, learn how to deliver it in a way that is clothed in love. Okay. So look at this. This is God's heart. Love is patient. Yes, he is. He's been dealing with you all these years and me. Clearly God is patient. <laughs> Sometimes I think my guardian angel is exhausted, but God is patient. Okay. So love is patient. Love is kind. That eliminates most of us right there. We, we can just take, we can sit down, okay? Uh, love does not envy. It's not boastful. Love is not arrogant. This is, does it, so does, when you're getting, you feel like you're getting something, does it fit in these parameters? Are you guys with me? Okay. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not irritable. Oh man, where's the white out? Love is not irritable. God. I got some repenting to do. Okay. Because I be irritated about a lot of things often. Okay. So, but here's the heart of God. And this is why maybe this passage I should put down for my scripture memorization for the week. Okay. So, love, go back. Love is patient. It's kind. Love does not envy. It's not boastful. Love is not arrogant. Oh, Lord. It's not rude. Oh, it's not self-seeking. Love isn't trying to run people off on the road or get in front of them and cut them off and make them drive down in a ditch. Road rage. Arr. No, that's, that's not God. Okay. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not irritable and does not keep a record of wrongs. Oh, my God. Tell your neighbor you can drop your rocks. <laughs> you ain't going to be stoned in nobody today. Love is not getting ready. So you get away. I, I, have, a, I have a word. <laughs> Tammy, Tammy says she's working on, working on it. Okay, yeah, me, me too. I'm working on it too. So you cannot stand up in front of somebody. I hear the word of the Lord for you. The Lord says, thus says the Lord, thou gettest, gettest on my nervous. <laughs> no, you, you can't do that, okay? It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. I need to highlight that in my Bible. So when I'm doing that, I know it's not Jesus. Okay, love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures, endures, endures all things. In other words, love doesn't give up on us as fast as we give up on other people. Shabba. Okay. Um, uh, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Look at verse 8. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end eventually. When we are face to face with him, won't be any more need for, for prophecies, okay? Um, as for tongues, they will cease. Won't be any need for tongues. As for knowledge, it will come to an end because we will know even as we are known. But look at verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, speaking of the perfection of Christ and when we are with him in the fullness of perfection, okay, um, the partial will come to an end because right now we're walking in the partial. Um, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child. So in other words, we should stop acting like brats and grow up in the things of the spirit. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then face to face. For now I know in part, but then I will know fully as I am fully known. Now these three remain, faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is love. Okay? So that is the nature of God. So when you're trying to figure out if a word is coming from the Lord, if you feel like you're receiving something and it leaves you feeling like um, Muhammad Ali threw a left hook and cleaned your clock and knocked you out, that might not be the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm just saying. 
um, does it bear witness? Uh, does it bear witness in your heart? Although sometimes you might not understand it, there'll be something in you that'll say, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's right. Okay. So that's how we discern, how we're discerning when God is speaking to us. Okay. Um, it, it is often confirmed by outward circumstances or situations in the person's life. That is a very good measure of if it was the Lord, it'll be confirmed. There'll be things happening in your life that will remind you, oh, I remember the Lord said that to me, you know. Um, several years ago, 2019, I was praying about planting churches. And um, because I've received several prophecies about planting churches that you're going to plant a work and not just one, but many, because I'm going to give you a revelation on how to plant churches. So I was reminding the Lord in 2019, uh, yeah, because I was coming up on my 60th birthday in, in 2020. And so I um, was telling the Lord, do you know how old I am? Come on now, if we're going to do this, we need to do it. You know, let's. Let's get her done. You know, what, how do you want to do this? You know, I, I don't know how to move forward. How do I, how do I do this? And I prayed about it and prayed about it. And one day the word cyber church just came up in my spirit. And I was like, cyber church, cyber church. What in the world is cyber church? So I went online, of course, and Googled it. Stuff came up. There was a church that even had like a training program on cyber church. And I was like, well, okay, that's interesting. I wrote it down. And then 2019, we were in a staff meeting at the pre my previous place of employment. And um, I brought it up. I said, you know, I, I had this dream and I feel like the Lord is saying that the cyber church is going to be very prevalent in terms of planting churches and drawing um, people in. And um, it was kind of laughed to scorn, like I had lost my mind. And who knew that a few months later, the entire world was locked down because of COVID. And every church had to begin, if they were going to survive, to enlist cyber church and go online. So um, that word was confirmed. Um, and even though I was like cyber church, I just wrote it in my journal and begin, okay, God, how do I do that? And I'm still praying through that, pressing through that, Lord, how do I organize that? How do I do that? Because I know it's a word from the Lord regard, like what we're doing right here, this is a part of Soterios Ministries cyber church outreach. We have Bible study, um, um, and we're reaching various nations and regions. I got people on here from Canada, people all over the greater Metro Detroit area, people in other parts of Michigan, um, and then people that watch. Some Everybody that is viewing may not be saying anything in the comments. So I have people in Mississippi, people in um, Arizona, you know, and so, um, yeah, God knew what was coming. Just like the word I got Saturday about angst. Now, he didn't um, define that for me other than say, you need to walk in the spirit so that you, you walk above the angst, you know. So I know that we need to prepare our hearts, okay, for whatever it is that's coming so that we can be, um, have a word of consolation for those who are really going to be going through. And then there are some other practical things that we could be doing too, like buying extra canned goods and um uh, you know, the type of stuff that don't, um, spoil, um, quickly and uh, water, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Candles, batteries, <laughs> what if all the power went out? And that's something to think about when you talk about cyber church, there has to be a way to still connect with one another and, um, make sure that people are still getting the word, that type of thing. We have to think about stuff like that in the days to come. So does it come to pass? <clears throat> That's one way that you can you 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 can discern if it was just you 
or if it was just the, the if it was um, the spirit of the Lord. Now, I, I should say also that um, God is an eternal God. God is in the spirit realm, okay? We are in time. So just because it doesn't happen overnight doesn't mean you didn't get a word from the Lord because God's timing is not our timing. You will recall Jesus told his disciples he was coming back soon, okay? And that's been about 2,000 years ago, okay? So, but when you think prophetically, what does the scripture say? A day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So from heaven's perspective, boy, this has got oil on it. I felt that. Um, the Lord has been gone about two days. We say, Lord, when are you coming back? It's been, it's been 2,000 years. It's been like a blink from heaven, from, from eternity's perspective, okay? So, and there's all kind of quantum physics too we could get into, like when people travel, like when they do space launches, like in this, and how time, there's a differential, you know, because you're in a different dimension or realm, so to speak, a different part of the heavens. And um, so time is different. Um, when you come back into, into um, this realm, people have aged more than people that were in that dimension. So anyway, I love quantum physics is real deep, you know, okay. Uh, all right, so you submit what you believe you are hearing to mature spiritual authority if you're not sure. You, you need to have a, um, you need to have a um, haver, ha, um, which is like havruta is a group, a small group of people that you can bounce the word off of and what you're going through. A haver is like a, a study partner. You need somebody that you can wrestle. Yeah, time does feel like it's moving fast. Yeah, because we're in the last of the last days. Um, and so um, you, you, you need people that you can submit things to, okay? So now look at this. Let me break these gifts down. Um, so when it comes to hearing the voice of the Lord, every believer, every disciple of Christ can hear the voice of the Lord, okay? That is the bottom of the triangle. Now see the picture. Um, what if they are all gone? What if, who, who, what is all gone? What if who is all gone? Uh, Tammy, you got to explain what you're, what you're asking. What if, who is they? Um, okay, so Tammy, put in the chat all the people. What people? What did I say? What if they are all gone? What if what people are all gone? <laughs> oh, the people you trust. Okay. Sorry about that, Tammy. Um, then it's time for you to develop a new community of faith. Ask the Lord to um, um, connect you with some people according to his heart that you can um, spend time with that you can just do nothing with, like go see a movie or, um, uh, you know, kick it, watch the football game, as well as share things, people you can call up and pray and share your heart with. You know, I have friends like that. Um, I also have a spiritual director that I see, uh, regularly. And so you need that level of relationship. And then you also need a small group, you know, um, you need a small group and just ask the Lord to bring those people into your life according to his heart and he'll do it. Okay. Um, and so every believer can hear the voice of the Lord. Look at, we're in Corinthians. So let's look at, we're right there. First Corinthians 12. Let's look at verse four. Now there are different gifts, but the same spirit, this translation says, another a translation says, but the Holy Spirit works all in all, okay? So the Holy Spirit working in all believers is the, the essence of life in Christ, okay? All believers have the Holy Spirit. 
Um, look at 1 Corinthians 14, 31. Let's look at a couple more. 14, 31 says, for you can all, okay, let's circle, let's, let's highlight all. For you can all prophesy. You can all prophesy one by one. This is talking about when we gather together in our home fellowships and our small groups that everybody can get can hear the voice of the Lord and share. You know, like if we say turn to your neighbor, turn to a partner, you guys take time to pray with one another. What is God speaking to your heart? Share, 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 share. We can all do that and we shouldn't be intimidated by that because at during the week we have boy man during the week we have been spending time in the word and with the word so we 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 are maturing our our ability to hear his voice now if you never spend time talking to him you never spend time with him then you don't know you you don't get to know him as well so on the bait the bottom level of that triangle or i shouldn't say the bottom level the foundational level is where the Holy Spirit works in everybody. We can teach children to prophesy. Everybody, every believer should be able to hear the voice of the Lord. Uh, let's look at Matthew 10. Let's look at a couple of these gospel passages. Matthew 10. Oh, what time is it? Okay. Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. Um, as you go, proclaim the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you received, freely give. This is where all believers are supposed to walk. This is not for an elite few. You need me to come and pray and bring my anointing with me. No, all believers, children can lay hands on one another and pray. We have to teach them how, okay? So the Holy Spirit working all in all, that's the foundational level. Now, when you talk about the gift of prophecy, some believers, if you go back to 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, go back there and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 10, um, this is talking about the God um, just dividing up gifts. To another, the performing of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits or discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. So there are gifts, uh, what's called the charismata, um, that the, the Holy Spirit begins to distribute. So you have all believers being able to prophesy. Then you have some believers that the Holy Spirit will give the gift of prophecy. Now, we can teach and train you to activate and activate that gift in your life. We can stir that gift up and teach you how to operate on that level. But there are some people that just have a Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. You have some people that like love to play basketball, okay? Um, and then you have Kobe Bryant, okay? Or you have me who like, oh, you can't see it. It's behind that partition. I have a keyboard and you see I have a guitar right there. And out in the other room, I've got a whole collection of Native American flutes. I've got... Um, behind this partition, I've got ukuleles, I have an electric guitar, I've got a cajon, which is a beatbox, like a portable drum, all of that. So you have me on the keyboard, and then you have Elasia, the young lady who plays for us on Sundays. Completely different level of gifting, okay? She's like, what, 16, I think? And so her, she has the charismata for doing that which combined with practice and study is going to take her into the doma level of that gifting as a Levite and depending on what she does with it. Okay. Um, but some people can have the charisma gift. Okay. And then you have the doma gift. That is the office. And there are few that are chosen for that level. So just because you can hear the voice of the Lord, which is where all believers should walk, 
It doesn't mean you are a prophet. A prophet is a calling and that doma gift is given by Jesus as he calls you into that level of ministry. And so you'll see a Romans, um, not Rome, well, Romans 16, 26. Well, let's look at that since it came out. And then we'll look at Ephesians 4. Romans 16 and verse 26 says, But now revealed and made known through the prophetic scriptures according to the command of the eternal God to advance the obedience of faith among the Gentiles. Okay, I must need to read that in another translation. Oh, but the now revealed and made known through the prophetic scriptures. Yeah, it's calling the scriptures prophetic. I'm not sure why that's there. Unless it's, I need to look at it in the King James or something. Look at Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 is talking about the Doma gifts, okay? Um, verses uh, 10 through 12. The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens to fill all things. And this is talking about Jesus. And it says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? To equip the saints for the work of ministry, to build up the body of Christ for how long? Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Now that's all that's still happening. So those gifts, all of them, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, are still operating in the church today. Although there are some who think that all we have is the pastor and the um, teacher and the evangelist. So they cut two fingers off the hand. So you got this hand that's only got three fingers and you can get some stuff done, but you could get a lot more done if you had all five fingers working together. Okay. So just because you can hear the voice of the Lord and you have intimacy with him, it doesn't mean you are a prophet unless he calls you to that office and he lets you know that you are. So the middle level is the gift of prophecy. The highest level is the office of prophet. And the foundational level is where Paul says you can all prophesy. So the gift of discernment is that when it comes to the gift of discernment, the highest level of discernment would be the seer prophet. At the middle, there would be, <clears throat> this is another example if you take the spiritual gift. There would be the gift of the discerning of spirits, which we should all pray that the Lord will give us so that when people are ministering, <clears throat> you can genuinely and honestly, from a pure flow, discern whether or not what you're experiencing is the Holy Spirit. Or if it's the person's flesh. And at the foundational level, we have the faith level referred to in Hebrews 5 and verse 14, this is where we start teaching you how to hear. Because if he, um, Hebrews 5 and verse 14 <coughs> says, those who are of full age, that is those who by reason of use, who by reason of use, those who go to God's gym and exercise their gift muscles will get stronger in them, okay? <clears throat> the gifts get stronger by reason of use. If you do not use it, you do not grow in it. Um, and so that's why, like, I have my keyboard and I may, I can, and I can read music. I can sit down and figure some stuff out. And if I work on it and work on it and work on it and work on it, then I can play it. You have other gifted people who can sit down and play because God has given them the gift and he's added in the right instruction, that type of thing for them to mature in it, okay? And so if you take discernment, the highest level is the seer prophet. They can, they can discern on a very high level. You have the middle level, the gift of the discerning of spirits. You have the foundational level, Hebrews 5, 14. Let's look at it in the Christian standard Bible. <clears throat> but solid food is for the mature, for those whose senses have been trained to distinguish between good and evil. So we want to be those who by reason of use have exercised our spiritual senses. 
So there are many who have operated in the foundational level and that middle level where they may have the gift of prophecy or the gift of the discerning of spirits and they have the foundational level where all believers can hear and they will come back declaring themselves, I'm a prophet, I'm a seer prophet and man, I've lived through, I have lived through um, those types of things. And you can usually tell, all you gotta do is let put them up and let them start ministering. Either they carry the weight of the mantle or they don't. You can you can always tell. You can't fake it. It's like you could put me, I, I could say, I'm a psalmist. So you sit Elisha down and you sit me down at the keyboard and then it, there will be no description. You, then you can tell, <laughs> you know, oh, okay, go sit down, Bernie, and don't be over there banging on that piano making noise. Okay. Now my guitar is different. I've been playing that for a little bit longer so I can pluck a tune a little better. Okay. But people will operate, but you would not see me selling no tickets for you to come and see me in concert playing my guitar. Okay. <laughs> you won't know, because I'm not in the Doma level of that gift. Okay. So um, when you, if you, can operate on the foundational level and you can operate on the middle level, which is where the gift is working in you now, and you declare that you have that Doma gift, you will draw the warfare that goes with that gift without the mantle to um, carry it. And so you will bring unnecessary spiritual warfare against yourself. So I wouldn't recommend that you do that. It is spiritually dangerous to declare that you are a prophet or a seer unless you truly know that you are one, okay? So one way to know if you meet the criteria is to see the job description in Ephesians 4, which we just read. You know, that gift is given um, for the work of ministry to equip others. You should be able to activate those gifts in other people, train and equip them in the gifts that you, you say that you carry. And if you can't do that, then you might be prophetic, but you are not a prophet, okay? So the words revelation, interpretation, and activation or application can serve as a simple and straightforward way to process information in the spirit realm. So how do you, so, so let's say you, you've been praying, you received an impression or a feeling or a picture, and you're like, man, is that God? You know, how do you, how do you process that? What do you be, we've already gone through how you can tell if it's the voice of the Lord or if it's just your flesh or some, some crazy idol speaking in your soul. So you have discerned, you've gone through that process. You're like, okay, this, the Lord is trying to tell me something. So what, how, what do you do with it? Well, first, the first step is the actual revelation. God shows you something or God tells you something, or God impresses something upon you, however you describe it, however you get it, you got it, okay? That's step one, that's the revelation. And so the, here's where we miss it. We don't press in and ask the Lord, what does that mean? What does that mean? So like the other day when the Lord said, come up here, walk in the spirit, you must be to come up to, to be able to be above the angst that's coming onto this nation. So I begin to press into that, but I need to sit with him and go deeper. What does that mean? What is the angst that's coming upon this nation? And see, as, as he will he begin to, you know, give me more regarding that, okay? So God shows you something. And step two, we need to ask him what it means. Lord, what is, and, and if you don't hear anything immediately, Write it in your journal, continue to carry it in your heart, continue to remind him, Lord, you know, I'm still waiting on you to tell me what this means. It might be that day, it might be a few hours later, it might be a couple days later, it might be a week later, you'll be sitting on the couch with a hamburger and fries, watching the news or <clears throat> something on TV, and all of a sudden the, the revelation or the interpretation will come. You'll just hear it. You'll just know it. You're like, oh, you'll have an aha moment. <clears throat> so we receive the revelation. 
We ask him for the interpretation. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a <clears throat> tickle right down there. I can't get to it. And then the third thing is the application, okay? So once he, God shows you something, you sit on it like a mother hen until he gives you the revelation. And then you ask the Lord, the third thing is the application. Okay, Lord, what should I do with this information that he just gave me? Um, what do you want me to do with that? You know, it's like, oh. So if I hear the Lord saying, there's angst that's coming to this nation, like, okay, I need to share that with the body of Christ. Something's coming. I'm not sure what it is, but I know that it's coming, okay? So we need to prepare. How do we prepare? We walk in the spirit. And maybe he'll give me more pieces to that, okay? So revelation, ask the Lord to show you a picture in your imagination. Um, this is how you practice this during the week. Lord, um, what do you want to say to me? You know, give me a scripture verse or show me a picture or just speak to my heart, you know, ask him for the revelation. And then when you get it, Lord, what does that mean? What does that mean? And don't always assume because sometimes what he shows you isn't what it means. You, you run in another direction and you have to wait on the Lord, what does this mean? And then there's the application, Lord, what should I do in response? Now, this is when he received, you get something and he'll tell you, tell, he'll tell you if it's for you, if it's for somebody else, that type of thing. Should you just receive it and be encouraged? Is it for someone else for you to encourage them with what you received? You know, let's, let's grow up in how we walk with God and how we respond to the word of God. It's critical in this day and age in which we walk. Hebrews 5, 14. KJV in the King James, but strong meat belongs to them who are a full age. This is what we were just looking at. Even those who by reason of use have their senses um, exercised to discern both good and evil. So Minister Cannon is saying, um, when the Lord told me to relocate, I was like, what? Why? Where? I asked every day until the answer. It was 30 days before the answer came. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Yeah. We have to be patient, you know, and um, just press into him, sit in his presence and let him prepare our heart to receive it. Solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, because of practice. So you, you guys need to practice this this week. And I'll say this and then we'll pick it up next week. <clears throat> Dr. Bill Hammond, Dr. Bishop Apostle Bill Hammond, a Christian international father of the apostolic and prophetic movement in the contemporary time. He, you, This is what he said in equipping people to hear the voice of the Lord. It's very simple, but I'm telling you it works. When you get before the, when you're sitting in your sacred space, sitting in your prayer closet, driving down the road, asking God a question, all these thoughts bouncing around in your head, reach for the thought behind the thought. Reach for the thought all the craziness. Oh, I don't hear him. Oh, what is that car? Man, what is that man doing? All, all of that stuff bouncing around. Man, I got to get, get home. Oh, did I turn the stove off? All of that stuff. That's you. That still, quiet voice. That thought behind the thought. Very quiet. That one is the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, you can take it to the bank. If you learn how to begin to reach for that quiet still voice behind the thought you will find the voice of the holy spirit okay all right beloved we are out of time i'm not out of words but i am out of time we'll pick it up next week continuing to learn how do we activate how do we learn how to hear god's voice i want you to practice practice get in your prayer closet ask him what does he want to say to you? Um, where is he? You know, before you go try, I need to get a word for you. No, get a word for you. <laughs> what does he want to say to you? And then you do those, go through those steps. Okay. Listen, beloved, God loves you. He really does. And so do I. I'll see you again next week. God willing, be safe out there and uh, stay prayed up. God bless you.